Okay, good morning. So let's start a little bit earlier. Okay, so so today we will have our tutorial on the topic uh, mathematical induction. So I have prepared uh, two examples for you. So okay, so the first one is this one. We have uh, uh, we have n pieces of pancakes, so they are of different shapes. So so one some of them is larger, some of them is smaller. So we can use a number to represent the relative size of these pancakes. So the number is listed from one, two, three up to n. And the target of this problem is we want to perform some operations so that the pancake will be now sorted from small to large, from top to bottom. What kind of operations can we can we perform? So we can perform so-called flip. So flipping so let's say this is the top part, this is the bottom part. So a flipping operation will select any number of pancakes from the top and then we may we can make a reverse of them. So if you read the pancakes, it's like three, six, five, two, starting from the top. After the flipping of these four pieces of pancakes, it will become two, five, six, three. Okay. Suppose there are n pieces of pancakes. We want to show that by using flippings, we can sort the pancakes. And moreover, the number of flips that we need will not be that that many. We will need at most two times n minus one flips. So we will see that it is true when n is equal to one or n is equal to two, because when n is equal to one, we just have one piece of pancake and no flipping is needed. So two times n minus one is equal to zero. So we don't need any flips. And when we have two pieces of pancakes, one way that we can see is uh, so we may either uh, see the pancakes are sorted, so we don't need any flips, or when the when the pancakes are upside down, two on top of one, then we will need to make just one flip, and then we can make everything sorted. Sorts means we are arranging things from small to large. Okay, so how can we solve this problem? So let's think about it. Actually, a simplified version or an adaptation of this problem appears in an exam two years ago, I think. Yeah, maybe last year, maybe two years ago. So how can we solve this? So a clever observation is this one. We can always use two flips to make the largest piece. Ah, sorry, there's a typo here. The largest piece, one single piece, the largest one, we can make it become the bottom piece. So what does that mean? So let's say this is the arrangement of pancakes before we do anything. Let's say L represents the largest one. So what we can do here is that we locate the largest piece and then use one flip to make it to the top piece. Is that okay? And after that, we flip everything so that we make the largest piece bottom. So using two flips, we can make the largest piece bottom. So by doing this again and again, so we can make everything sorted. So we use two flips to make the largest bottom, and then we use two flips to make the second largest bottom, or the on top of the largest one. Okay, and so on and so forth. Or if you want to make an induction-like argument, we can use two flips to make the largest bottom, and then we will never move this piece. And after that, by induction, we can use two times n minus two flips to sort the remaining n minus one pieces. Is that okay? So this problem was actually discussed a long time ago, yeah, 1979. And at that time, it is already known that we don't need two times n. We just need five n plus five divided by three flips. And it is already enough. So if you look at it, so it is like 5n divided by 3, it is no more than 2n. It is like 1 point, is it 1.666n. Okay. So this result is actually slightly or cleverer than 
what we have just observed. And this result appears in this paper. So the name of the paper is called Bounds for Sorting by Prefix Reversal. The operation of flipping is actually something that we call it a prefix reversal. Prefix means the beginning. We reverse the beginning part of some array. Okay. And then this paper is written by William Gates and Christos Papadimitro. So William Gates is a super famous person. I bet every one of you must know. So he his nickname is called Bill Gates, the CEO or the former CEO of the Microsoft company. And this paper appears in this journal called Discrete Mathematics. So if you are interested, you can search for the name of this paper and then you can read it by yourself. So apart from having this result, they have also proved that, okay, in the worst setting, we will need a certain number of flips. So something like 17 n over 16 flips. And then also they have also discussed what if the pancakes they have each of each piece of the pancake, there are two sides. So maybe one side has a logo on it, one side you don't have anything. And then you want to sort the pancakes so that each piece has to be uh, having uh, the, the, the logo on top. Okay, so there is a restricted uh, uh, flipping scenario. So if you're interested, yeah, take a look of this one. So the problem that we have, or the, the solution that we have here is uh, based on induction, but actually, the, the way that we solve it is based on the recursion idea. So we solve the problem by first making the problem into a smaller or an easier problem. And then we solve the easier problem with the same idea. So this is the idea of recursion. Okay. Now, the next example here is we want to show that square root 2 is irrational. So we have proven this already when we have discussed uh, proof by contradiction. Here, we are going to use the, the induction format and then show that square root 2 is irrational. But of course, uh, it didn't, so we are using induction as our format, but then we, we are still using contradiction somewhere inside the proof, so to make a easier to understand argument. Okay, so the, the, the proposition that we want to show here is, let, let's say Pn be the proposition, or the proposition function more correctly, okay, of square root 2 is not equal to b over n for all positive integer b. And then this is the proposition that we have, and then what we want to show is, we want to show that p of n is true for all positive integer n. So if we can show this, then what does that mean? It, it, it means that square root 2 is not equal to the ratio of any two positive integers. So it is not rational because square root 2 is also not equal to 0. Okay, so, so, by, so to, to see a number is rational, it must be a ratio of two integers. Okay, so square root 2 is not negative, so we don't need to consider ratio between two negative, uh, or ratio between a negative and a positive integer. And square root 2 is not 0, so we don't need to consider b to be 0. And what we need to consider is just square root 2 cannot be equal to any integer divided by any positive integer. Okay, so b is positive. So how can we show? Okay, so this is the induction argument. So I, I put it here. So we will see that, oh, okay. So square root 2 is strictly greater than 1 and less than 2. How do we see this? We just, yeah, you, you can compute the value of square root 2. Yeah, and then you, you see this. Or, or you can, you can uh, multiply everything by square root 2 and then you will see that this is true. So, so, so somehow, or squaring everything, so you will see that this is going to be true. So square root 2 cannot be equal to 1, and square root 2 cannot be equal to 2, because it is in between them. And then square root 2 cannot be equal to any other positive integer that is greater than 2. So what does that mean? 
So we must have square root 2 cannot be equal to b over 1 for all positive integer b. And this is the, the meaning of, yeah, this part is actually equivalent to saying that p1 is true. p1 says, p1 says what? Square root 2 is not equal to b over 1 for all positive integer b. Okay, so b1, uh, p1 is true. Okay, now what we need to do next is uh, we can assume that p1, p2, p3, up to pk, they are all true. So we are actually using the strong induction. So we are not just simply assuming that pk is true, but we assume that p1, p2, up to pk, they are all true. And our target is to show that pk plus 1 is also true. Now if we can do so, then we have completed the inductive case. So when we have the base case shown to be true, and if it is co also correct to, to have assuming this one and show that pk plus 1 is true, then we have completed the induction format so that we can show that pn is true for all n. So how can we show this particular part? Okay, so this particular part, we, can sh we are going to show this by using contradiction. Okay, so we want to show pk plus 1 is true but we are going to show this to be true by contradiction. So what we need to do here is we assume that to the contrary, pk plus 1 is false, and then we hope to arrive at some contradiction later. So if pk plus 1 is false, then what does that mean? So it means that square root 2 can be expressed as b over k plus 1 for some positive integer b. So here it says that it cannot be for all. So the opposite is it is equal to something for some integer b. Okay. Now square root 2 is equal to this one. So we square both sides and move k plus 1 square to the left hand side. We will have 2 times k plus 1 square is equal to b square. Now we, we use the same argument that we have used before. So we see that b square is an even number and b is also an even integer. So what does that mean? So it means that b has to be even. Now when b is even, then b squared is a multiple of 4. So after dividing it by 2, we will see that k plus 1 squared is even. So it implies that k plus 1 is even. Is that okay? So in this case, once we have this argument, 2 times k plus 1 squared is equal to b squared, then we can immediately show that b is even and also k plus 1 is even. So in that sense, we can divide b by 2 and we can also divide k plus 1 by 2 and they are remaining to be both integers. So this one is an integer and this one is an integer. Okay, now we let us consider big B to represent the value of b over 2, which is an integer, and let's say big K is equal to the half of k plus 1, which is also an integer. At the beginning, we claim that square root 2 is equal to b divided by k plus 1. So this is going to be the same as big B over big K. And now we have a contradiction. So where is the contradiction? Yeah, the contradiction is the value of k here is actually smaller than k plus 1, right? The value of k, big K, is always smaller than k plus 1. So in that case, we have, so this big K must always be one of the values from 1, 2, 3, up to the little k. So previously, we mentioned that square root 2 cannot be equal to b over big K because we assume that p of big K is already true. This k in particular is something that is in between 1 to little k. So we have a contradiction. Here, square root 2 is equal to big B over big K, and the other case is square root 2 cannot be equal to big B over big K. So these two in combination shows that we have a contradiction. 
So in that case, if we assume pk plus 1 is false, we get a contradiction. So what does that mean? It means that pk plus 1 has to be true. So in that case, we have the inductive case proven and the whole induction proof completes. Okay, so actually, yeah, that's all that I want to share with you today. So let me see if you have any questions. Yeah, so yeah, so let me make a brief announcement now. So the school is now um, requiring or maybe suggesting that the classes will, will go face to face. But then for our class, it is a, a little bit special. We have many more students than uh, than we have. So we have 400 students close to, and we don't have large enough classroom right now. So to I think the best way is to keep the the class online, and it is actually a promise to 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 you as at, at the beginning of this class. So I don't want to make a change unless it is necessary. So also the the uh, exams will also be online. So this is what we are going to do unless uh, the school requires us to do the other way. Okay, and if you have any questions uh, for this class or anything, yeah, please let me know. Or otherwise, yeah, we can we can end the tutorial today and continue the discussion uh, on on Wednesday. So Wednesday class will be talking about something exciting called the pigeonhole principle. Okay, so yeah, let's end the class now. Yeah, I hope everything goes fine. Yeah, thanks. Ah, the 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 exam one is still marking. So yeah, thank you. So yeah, I, I yeah, let's wait. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. See you on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you.